Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing. If the breath feels comfortable, keep up that rhythm. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change. Make it longer, or shorter, deeper, shallow, shallower, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to find what way of breathing feels good for the body right now. And think of it as a cooling energy coming in and going out. Nourishing all the blood vessels, nourishing all the cells in your body. Because you want to be able to stay right here. Because if you're going to see anything in your own mind, you have to watch it in the present moment, especially because the mind is shaping its experience in the present moment through its actions, it's deciding to think about this or that, look at this, look at that. You want to make sure your intentions are in line with what you really want to do, what you really want to gain out of life. Because all too often other agendas come in. You look at your mind and you realize there's not just one mind in there, it's lots of minds, lots of people. Some of the voices you picked up from your family, some of them you picked up from your friends. And at the moment they have their ideas. Sometimes they're quiet for a while, and then they have their ideas. Wouldn't it be better to do th this or think about that? And while you're meditating, you say, no, anything that's not related to the breath is not really a friend. Your friends are the ones that want you to stay here, because they're the ones that believe in the fact that your actions make a difference and your actions come out of your mind, so you've got to get your mind in good shape, and this is how you do it. We really have to be careful when we're meditating, as in life, you know, what friends we hang out with. As with friends outside, when you hang around with particular friends and you start picking up their habits, you start picking up their attitudes, their ideas, often without noticing. It's just like it seeps into you. You hear these ideas again and again, you see their actions and are around them again and again, and you begin to act like them, you begin to think like them, speak like them. So you have to be careful. Who are these people you're allowing to come into you through osmosis? And the Buddha says there are four characteristics you want to look at. One, does this person really believe that your actions make a difference? In other words, do they have faith in the principle of karma, conviction in the principle of karma? Two, are they virtuous? Would they harm other people? Would they tell lies? Would they steal? How do they feel about lying? Do they feel it's justified to lie sometimes or to kill sometimes? Stay away from them. If they're, they're generous, are they generous with their time, generous with their belongings? That's someone you can trust if they've got right views. And then finally, wisdom. You look, want a friend who's wise. This applies not only to the people you hang around with, but the internet sites you go to and the chat rooms you go to, the TV shows you, you watch, the radio shows you listen to, the things you read. All these become your friends, and you have to make sure they really are genuine friends. And the problem is with a lot of these impersonal forms of communications, you don't know where these people are coming from, so you have to be extra careful. And think about what this person is saying. Is it really in line with the principle that your actions make a difference, or is it more careless and apathetic, irresponsible? So the people who are talking to you, are they really virtuous? Can you trust them not to lie to you? Can you trust them to be generous? Can you trust them to be wise? These are the things you have to watch out for, because these are the people you're taking into your mind, and they're going to be the ones who start chattering to you as you try to meditate. So as the Buddha said, this is one of the factors that leads to your well-being in this lifetime, is being careful to hang around admirable friends, people who really are good, the kind of people you'd like to have their example seep into you, because you see that they're good, they're virtuous, they're generous, they have conviction in their actions, the importance of their actions, and they're wise. When you have those friends outside, it's a lot easier to deal with the voices in your mind, because they become a better group of friends. You start learning how to recognize the voices in yourself, the thoughts that tell you, oh, it doesn't matter what you do, or go ahead and do what you want for right now, make up for it when you come to the monastery. Other ones who say, well, it doesn't matter if you tell a little white lie, and the little white lies get to add up, like little white bugs. And then there's the people who say, oh, you don't have to be generous, it doesn't really make any difference, or the people who really don't know what, why you're suffering, and they say the cause of your suffering is outside, somebody out there. All of these are voices in your, in your mind you can't trust. So be careful about the people you hang around with, the people that choose, whose influence you allow into your life as you deal with the media. And that way it would be a lot easier to sort through the friends and true friends and false friends in your own mind. And once they're sorted out, okay, then you can really get down and do the meditation and get some benefit from it.